Well, welcome along here to the 2020 ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup one here in Ljubljana. Very excited on a slalom course that's hosted two European Championships as well as three World Championships. I feel so happy to finally join the community and deliver an event that has been three months of uh, non-ending meeting, video conference, uh, contact with the authority, us organizing committee very, very, very eager to deliver the event. At this stage, it's already an achievement. We are here. The start field is certainly not the one we would expect uh, for a World Cup, but uh, I think the most important point is we give an opportunity to competitors to meet and have a new challenge for almost the first one for this season, except for the European. And the second thing is that we are certainly testing, unfortunately, a procedure that we will have to live with for a few months, if not a few years, in the coming uh, time. Me as an athlete, I'm happy that we're having a race, but the conditions are really strange. Yeah, a lot of athletes didn't come because of the situation in Europe and around the world. And I also took some, some time off after the European Championships, so I'm also not in the top shape. So for me, it's also a bit harder to, to get in the feeling for, for the racing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the young paddlers are really motivated. <laughs> Every chance they get, they try to uh, use it and try to perform good. But for us uh, older athletes, you know, it's uh, it's hard to motivate to go on the start. But I try to do what I can in these conditions that I am. I just hope I will feel better at least to do two good runs. If that brings me a good result, I will be happy. If not, I will be just happy to be to this season to be over. I tried not to expect too much because things are changing all the time. So I just really try to, to do the best that I can in each moment. And I hope the water will also drop a little bit so it will be easier to race. Yeah, I just want to have clean and fast runs. So yeah, I'll do my best. Bertrand Gutierrez alongside me. The semi-finals now, it's very much a reset. Yes, exactly. It's a reset if you compare that uh, at the semi-final. Well, Camille Prigion is hoping for a golden finish, but the only person, only woman who could stop her is her cousin. So family exactly. rivalry is really the story here. And she was the fastest in the semi-final, but can she convert that? to gold. I'm sure she can. But it's also the hard position when you start last for the final. You won the semi-final, so you have a lot of pressure, but you have to control that when you are uh, an athlete. And she's doing okay. The first part is a little bit late, but it's okay. So it could be real heartbreak for Slovenia if Prigent makes the podium. They'd have two just off. Up, up, up. Yeah. How aware are you in the boat of your time? Do you have any idea that how your time is, or you just focus no, on the No, no, you, you stay focused only about your line and your project, you know? The time's coming after. Oh, that's a good run at the moment. Oh, she's Bertrand doing well. getting excited. That's pretty cool. Go, 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 up, up, up. French gold is assured, but will it be which cousin? Yeah, that's a good run. Well, she's Whoa. not just one. She's yeah. absolutely smashed it. 1.88. Cool. 
faster than her Amazing. cousin. Amazing. It's really good for her. Well, it might be a reduced field in these COVID times, but still a stunning victory. Hey, she did a hard work. She won, she won the semi-final and she also won the final. That's pretty hard. Well, considering her only senior outing at World Cup level was here in Ljubljana when she finished 19th in the semi-final, but this time converting a semi-final win into gold. Like uh, some good race this morning, already in the semi, and now I did it again, so I'm happy, really happy. At the top, I was a bit low in the seven, but then at the end, I was like, I need to paddle if I ever want to win, and that's what I did. So here is the rundown. America kicking things off with Michael Smolin and Joseph Lucas Wero Malo Camino. That's Vet Kuda on a sick for the hosts. Isaac Borstrom, the thumbs up. The 29 year old underway, and we're really now at crunch time to see who will take home World Cup medals. I certainly said there was a lot of rain yesterday, the higher waters, lower today, but it may be slightly easier, as I said, but as we've seen, it's the latter part that's really been the deciding factor. He's lying at the moment, it's okay. It just, he's a little bit less aggressive than Pedro, but still a good line, and... Still in contention, but exactly. it's... Exactly. Uh, and this section is the most important section right now. I suppose when you're a bit more careful than speed, you, you really can't afford a penalty. Because yeah, you're, yeah, you've not got the speed to yeah, make up for it. You control everything, but it's also the risk because you have to take a maximum risk to win. And I think it's a good time. Oh, and it's point oh, nine good. three. Well, it's a really good run. As you said, he took more care, but he didn't sacrifice the pace. Well, a stunning performance. He was the first Swede at an Olympic Games, and now not only their first medalist at a World Cup event, but a golden moment ahead of Peter Kaiser, who just pipped by half a second Pedro Gonçalves, the Brazilian, taking the bronze. It's amazing, yeah. I was really happy to be in the final. It was four years since last time on on this course as well. And uh, yeah, to put in a good run was really nice. Uh, as a Swede, I think it's very important to show that we can be in the in the top and to share a podium with Peter Kauser. That's just unreal.
So this is the women's extreme final. Only one will be left empty-handed. Medals ready to be given out, but who will take their chance? That's very much to seed at the moment. Minnesota leading out Strieber with Kudnetsova and Prijon following behind. I'm not sure Prijon looked like she got caught up a bit at the back. So far, easy going for a Minnesota. It's a big fight on this final. The Russian takes the advantage of this final. The look that way from the seeding, and it's certainly so far looks that way. Oh. It's a bit of a problem on that gate, but it's Sova who strolls through to gold. And you can see her bubbling, bouncing her way to top spot. There's your winner, Alsu Minasova, her bronze medal winning compatriot, a 1-3 for Russia. It was a really good race uh, with uh, really strong girls. It was aggressive, a very interesting run. Men's K1 final, Can Martin, Stanovsky, Max Carlson, or veteran Trent Long of America make it an upset. Yeah, Pepe won every run today. Underway. There we go. And Konsalvez almost, oh. you saw Stanovsky. It's a just looked like he had a good Stanovsky line well. and it just, yeah. just ran away from it. Look how powerful. Pepe is decides to go on the far side. There is a fight between these two guys. guys. Sanofsky not giving up the fight. The other two yeah, long. Yeah. Oh, well, they're. Oh, that's a fight. <laughs> Tread long seemed to have absolutely ended Sanofsky's chances. Everybody decided to take this app on the left. I suppose traffic jams in extreme kayaking is. Uh, Part of the danger. Yeah. Ah, Pepe is going to win, I think. It's hard to see yeah. unless he makes some absolute yeah. error. He's absolutely not breezing yeah. over the line, yeah. hand in the air like the he just don't care. As we see, gold for Pepe. <laughs> I tell I'm super happy because I get like silver medal two times in the World Cups in stream, uh, bronze medal in the World Championships in stream. So now I get the, the gold and I'm really happy because for me it's a fantastic weekend. I had the faster time in the, of the day with one touchy, bronze medal yeah. and after like one year not racing and I'm super happy, super happy. My name is Marjorie Delassou. I'm a 22-year-old paddler in canoe and kayak, and I just qualified for Tokyo 2021 in C1. I was born in the Alps, so basically we tend to ski more. I started kayaking at school with my little sister. We immediately were hooked. My two other siblings started also, and now we're all kayaking. Then we moved to Pau to join the Young Sports School. Obviously, with the COVID situation, it's been difficult to train. I was lucky I was quarantined with my family. So with my siblings, we practiced together. Well, and it was challenging. After lockdown, I went back to the French sporting school to train there every day with the group. 
It's true that the postponement of the Olympics was a good opportunity for me. Olympic qualifications are normally held in March. I thought it was going to be very difficult. It was a great plan to train for this year, and it worked so great. Honestly, I hadn't really realized it yet. Initially, I was training for Paris 2024, so it was a much longer-term project. Now everything's just happened so quickly, but I'm already really motivated to go back to training. We'll set up my preparations with my coaches, and everything will follow from there. We're even getting to go to Tokyo to explore the race course, so my schedule will be set with all that in mind. The Federation has chosen to send the under-23 team to this World Cup. It came just after Olympic selection, so it's not necessarily easy. But it's nice to arrive here in Tassin on this mythical race. The water levels change and everything, so we're so excited to start racing this weekend. Here is the start list. Victoria... Dobrot Vorska going out first. But eyes certainly on a few of the big names in the field. But let's see. The next is going to be more impressive normally with oh. Anna Sadila. Third in the world, an under 23 world champion. Can she celebrate the return of? Competitive canoeing with gold here in the C1 women's final. First section, section it's okay. She decided to spin on this gate. And she's early on the... Uh, too early, apparently. She's a little bit tight. And she touched it. Well, a nine-time World Cup medalist, although her only two golds have come in the extreme K1 back in 2018. One of those won on home water in Rio. But her last medal at C1 was back in Bratislava in June last year. Still battling for podium here in Slovenia. She's spin gate 30 and she hit the rock. Hit the bank. She's a little bit late right now, four seconds behind. With plus two of penalty. Well, the reigning C1 Pan American yeah. Games champion still battling away. She's fast on the last part at the moment. Let's see the last up. She's tight. We saw Liebfarth be a lot further away, so she'll certainly picked up some time there. Yeah, I think she will lead. Yes, one second point seven. Well, it's all smiles. Still, maybe disappointment. She maybe hoped to put a little bit more pressure yeah. on the paddlers to come. Disappointment in the K1 final, a missed gate, ending her hopes of a medal and a potential gold. But she's finished with a golden flourish in the women's canoe final. Lucy Prio in silver with Evie Levfarth making it double bronze in her weekend here in Tassin. had so much trouble yesterday. For me, it was really painful to do everything so well and very fast. And in the last gate to have a penalty and uh, that cost me everything. So uh, it was, I had trouble to recover from that, but I was like really focused on my run today and uh, I wanted to do much better. But finally to leave with a gold medal for me means so much. So I'm really happy. Now it's the men's turn. Certainly plenty of focus on the Slovenian pair of Luka Bozic and Benjamin Savsek, the European champion. But it's Nicola Gestin of France, who was the quickest in the semis. Well, the first of the two big home hopes, Luka Bozic. 
2018 World Cup final gold medalist. Can he repeat that feat here on home water? That gold in the C1 came at the So d'Argel in Spain on the Parc Olympique del Segre. Say back in September 2018, over two years later, after three podium finishes in 2019, can he find himself a way to top spot? Yeah, this guy is really talented. He has experience as well. And he's at home, so he has everything to be confident, and to flying on the water. And he's doing well at the moment. Let's see, gate number 13. That was fast, tight. He's a 13-time medalist at World yeah. and European Championships. Uh, most recently, that bronze in the C1 World Final in 2019. 1.2 seconds faster than Jules Bernardé. Bernardé beginning to sweat as Bozic turns up the heat in this men's oh. C1 final. Let's see. I think he's fast. It's going to be lead. With the time well, it's seven, sub 80 eight. seconds, but bashes it. The time of Bernadette. You said at the beginning that 78 seconds was around the time you'd expect for certainly a medal, potentially gold. And Bosic has really laid down a marker for the final two paddlers. Stunning from the Slovene taking gold ahead of the French pairing of Justin and Bernadé. The race is the race, so uh, I was preparing for today like for every race and I think, uh, like I said, uh, it's good to have so good run on the end of the year, on the end of the season, uh, so this is really good. I think this is the first time uh, I have some great runs before, but uh, this one was really good. Uh, I didn't feel good on the start, but then I, am tech, I was attacking, so I'm really happy for this run today. Fantastic weekend. As canoeing returned to the water. From myself and Bernard, thanks for joining us. It's been a terrific weekend. And for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>